Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime with Fairfield County Library. My name is Miss Nina and I am so excited for Storytime today. It's summer reading, so we're doing hybrid story times. That means we're gonna do story times in person at the library and story times online here. The in-person story times are gonna start at the same time as the video goes up, which for you guys means 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Okay, now that that's out of the way, are you guys ready for story time? Awesome! This week our theme is rain. That means this week we're going to read a lot of stories about weather and maybe learn a thing or two about the water cycle. Our first book is A Drop of Water by Gordon Morrison, published by Houghton Mifflin Books for Children. Two. A child's finger is wet with water from a meadow brook. The water moves down the small finger, and a drop begins to form on the tip. Above the child, clouds that brought rain move apart. The rain is stopping. The sun is coming out. Passing shower has cooled a summer day. Drifting away, the clouds pass over the land, forest, and mountain. Everything is wet from the rain clouds. A red-tailed hawk soars toward a nearby mountain. On the mountain, rainwater flows out of a forest of spruce and fir trees with its cool, evergreen scented air. Down the mountainside, it trickles from soil and rock through cracks and crevices into a mountain stream. Croak, croak, ravens call out as they fly from the mountainside. The stream tumbles over a cliff, and the place echoes with the sound of water falling onto rocks below. A cluster of birch trees stands in the midst of a small waterfall. Bubbles from the splashing water drift on ripples into a mountain pool. A thrush perches on a bird branch with hanging captains. A red fox drinks from the pool near ferns and mountain laurel. From the pool, the water travels down through the forest. In a flat, open area, it slowly spreads and mixes with the cold, still, tea-colored water of an upland bog. A moose pauses in its feeding. Pitcher plants grow in sphagnum moss. A flycatcher flies from its perch on Labrador tea to catch an insect. The bog is part of a beaver pond. A beaver dam, made of branches and mud, keeps the water from rushing away. Flowers of blue flag bloom around gnawed tree stumps. The smooth surface of the water reflects forest, mountains, and sky. Water seeping out through the dam rushes downstream. Over and around rocks, it babbles along through a changing woodland of sugar maple and yellow birch trees. A water thrush bobs along the rocks by a vibranium shrub. A long-tailed weasel eats a small fish caught in one of the many pools.
At the woodland edge, the stream slows and spreads into a shallow lowland swamp. It is a watery place of quiet and mystery, where red maple trees stand above a thicket of blueberry shrubs and tussock grass. Deer drink at its edge. A barred owl roosts by its cavity nest in the dead tree, and a flock of mallard ducks are dabbling, surface feeding in the open water. From the swamp, the shallow water spreads into an open area of tall grass-like plants, a meadow marsh. The chatter and chirping of nesting birds fill the air. A marsh wren scolds a red-winged blackbird. The blackbird has flown too close to the wren's nest, hidden in the cattail plants. Bulrush, tall and slender, makes a perfect reflection in the still water. The marsh is part of a farm pond. A farmer's dam made of wood and earth keeps the water from rushing away. The pond is deep and wide. Yellow pond lilies float on its surface. Holstein cows drink from it. Barn swallows also drink from it and catch flying insects above it. And a meadowlark sings its sweet song from a fence post. From the barn doorway, the farmer looks out over his pond and meadows. Curling over the dam, water flows from the pond. Passing under a bridge, it meanders, gently twists, and turns past timothy grass, painted turtles, leopard frogs, and a child crouching by the meadow. and from the child's fingertip falls a drop of water. All right, and here is some illustrations and more information on the different animals in the book. All right, that was a drop of water. What'd you guys think? All right, our next book is The Rain Came Down, written and illustrated by David Shannon and published by Blue Sky Press. On Saturday morning, the rain came down. It made the chickens squawk. The cat yowled at the chickens, and the dog barked at the cat, and still the rain came down. The man yelled at the dog and woke up the baby. Stop all that yelling, shouted the man's wife. The dog barked louder, and still the rain came down. A policeman heard the noise and stopped to see what was wrong. His car was blocking traffic, and half a block away, a woman squirmed in the back seat of a taxi. Hurry up or I'll miss my plane, she told the taxi driver. So he started honking his horn. The truck driver in front of him got mad and started honking back. I have tomatoes to deliver, he shouted. The ice cream man heard the honking and turned up the music on his van. Jingle a jingle went his music. Slap-a-de-slap, -slap, went his windshield wipers. 
and still the rain came down. The owner of the beauty parlor came out to see what all the fuss was about. She bumped into the barber coming out of his barber shop, and they began to argue. Up on his ladder, the painter grumbled, I can't paint in the rain. He started to climb down and bumped the barber in the head with his can of paint. Now all three of them are arguing. The grocery man stomped out onto the sidewalk and yelled, Where is that delivery truck? I need my tomatoes! He ran into a lady coming out of the clothing store and knocked her boxes into his fruit stand. Oranges, apples, and lemons bounced down the sidewalk, and still the rain came down. The policeman walked back to his car. What is all this ruckus about? he asked. The whole block was honking, yelling, and bickering and barking. And then... The rain stopped. And so did the noise. The sun came out, and the air smelled fresh and sweet. Everything shimmered, and a rainbow stretched across the roof. It's much too nice a day to be arguing, said the baker. I have cakes to bake, and I have pizzas to make, said the pizza man. I could use a shave while my building dries, said the painter to the barber. Then they went inside. The policeman said, everything looks a okay here to me, and he drove off in his car. The woman in the taxi decided she had time to have her hair done before her trip, and she went into the beauty parlor. So the lady with the boxes got into the taxi and went home. The truck driver told the grocer, I have your tomatoes. Wonderful, said the grocer, but first I have to pick up this fruit. The little girl and boy helped him, so he bought them ice cream cones, and the ice cream man gave them each an extra scoop because it was such a nice day. Then the man, his wife, and their baby had a picnic together in the backyard, while the dog, the cat, and the chickens slept in the warm afternoon sun. All right, that was The Rain Came Down. What'd you guys think? All right, everyone, thank you for coming to story time. Now, just because we're done reading does not mean we have to be done with story time. If you come to the library this week, you can get a story time kit, which are these fun-filled activity kits that we made to go with the books we read today. Each kit comes with a coloring sheet, a craft, and a tasty recipe that you can make with your grown-ups. This week, our craft is this guy. When I looked up the instructions, it, they called it a water cycle freebie. I like to think of it as a water cycle tap. To get a kit, you need to come to the Fairfield County Library and look for some crates in the children's section. Now we have two crates, one for Mondays and one for Wednesdays, so you want to make sure to grab the right kits, or you could end up with something completely different than what I showed you. The kits for this story time are in the group B crate. They're the blue ones. New kits come out whenever there's a new story time, but we might have some kits left from last time if you missed it. 
It never hurts to ask one of the librarians for help. Maybe ask for me, Miss Nina. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining me for story time. Once again, my name is Miss Nina, and I hope to see you in the library this week to pick up a story time kit. It's time to say goodbye, but I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye!